Hi, it's Lori Ballin in Las Vegas with Keller Williams Realty. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use Keep, the CRM that was previously called Infusionsoft. I'm gonna show you how to use Keep to send a newsletter to your database. Now the new Keep system is fairly new to me as well. I've been navigating it now for a little bit, trying to figure out how it all works. And for the most part, definitely easier um, than Infusionsoft. There's definitely some quick start uh, areas that make it a little cleaner and easier, but yet it still has bells and whistles for those of us that are like me that like the bells and whistles and really want to get advanced and build onto things. To me, I think that's what makes a good software nowadays is something that anybody can pick up and use, but it has the bells and whistles capability for the people that really want to drive it hard and become power users. That's what I like. Okay, so this might look a little different if you're an Infusionsoft user, you might have a different looking dashboard. There are several versions of Keep. I'll put a link below so you can check that out. I'm not sure about what versions are what, to be honest with you at this point. So let me just go ahead and show you how we make a newsletter and then you can explore the product and see what it is that works for your, um, for you, for you and your business, okay? All right. So we're going to, there's a couple ways to get there. If we go down here to broadcasts on the left hand side, this is where I'm going to go ahead and start my newsletter. Okay. So as you can see on this screen, you will have statistics right after you send an email. So yesterday I sent a mass email to 8,000 people. These were not real estate clients or customers, these were real estate agents. Pretty normal to have around a 3% uh, click-through rate on these types of emails where I'm inviting people to a paid event, so none of that matters for you. I'm just kind of giving you a scope on this is what it looks like. Down here, I've got a great one with a 63% open rate and 37% uh, clicks. That's absolutely incredible. So it all depends on what you're sending, how you're sending, but that's a whole nother conversation. Now we have the ability to send email broadcasts and we have the ability to send text broadcasts. At this moment, I'm not doing text broadcasts from Keep. I'm going to be, and I will revisit that. For right now, I'm just uh, getting all the email things going and that's what I'm work focused on today. So up on the, we're gonna start with the email and up on the right hand side, we're gonna go to new broadcast. And then we're gonna choose email broadcast. So far, pretty simple, right? Now we have the ability to send a text only broadcast, or we have the ability to send a text and graphics broadcast. The major difference is a text only is gonna look like a plain everyday email. The text and graphics are where you're gonna get the templates that have different designs. So let's go ahead and look at text and graphics and we'll get started. Okay, now it should start looking familiar to you, those of you that have been using Infusionsoft. So there's there's uh, not a ton of differences, but like I said, they've simplified a lot of the starting uh, startup versions to things. Okay, we have the gallery of templates. We have previously sent emails. We've got your draft emails and then your templates that you actually create and save that you're going to use every time. Let's just go ahead and browse through the gallery here so you can get an idea for what this looks like. So any one that you might be interested in, you can hover over it and you can click to use the template or you can click the eyeball to preview it. So let's take a look at this very first one here. We're not going to go through each and every one. I just kind of want to give you a scope of what it looks like. So right up top here, you have the ability to put a grade above the fold or above the scroll before people start scrolling down the page, call to action with a call to action button. And that can be, you can change that image to whatever you want. Then you've got sections. This is really where we're going with, pay, with uh, CRMs, newsletters, websites, all of these, um, all of these content templates are now page builders and they work with sections, 
content blocks, and widgets. You'll get kind of used to those terms as you start using those. If you're using WordPress, you might have noticed WordPress Gutenberg rolled out. Those are content blocks that are designed to build as a page builder. For those that are using Elementor, you're familiar with page builders or Oxygen or any of those, you're familiar with them. If you've never used them before, take a look. It's going to be really nice and and a great way to build. It makes it very simple for those of us like me who don't naturally have a great design um, skill. I am definitely a publisher, a content marketer. I'm great at search engine optimization, building an audience, email funnels, but I'm not good at graphics. It's just something I've never been great at. Um, art, that type of art is not my skill set. So I need templates to build and that's okay. And that's what we have today. So um, you can choose a template and then you're not stuck as to what that has on it. We can actually add to it. We can take away sections. Okay, so I just want to give you a quick idea. You can scan through all of these to see which one you might like to use. Keep in mind that you're completely able to customize it all, okay? So let's just go ahead and start with this first one. Why not? Let's go to use template. And for the purpose of this video, we're just making a quick example. Okay, this isn't something I'm actually sending at this moment. But to give you a quick walkthrough, right up top, you're going to choose what, who, who, who is the audience you want to send this newsletter to. This is going to be your recipients. Who's receiving it? Okay. Now, this is cool. You've got the ability here. You can either start typing to automatically pull one of your saved lists super easy or a individual tag so let's just say we want to add this one and then you'll notice it keeps blinking because you can add another tag so you can quickly and easily build a list right within here if that's what you want to do by using individual audience tags or you can go to a new search this is one i really like and now you can use the advanced search to search however you want. You can search for people that have a certain email status. You can search for people that have this tag, but not this tag. That's one of my favorite searches. And let me give you an example of how you would use something like that. Let's say I am sending out a, an open house announcement and it's going to be in Summerlin, which is the neighborhood I geographically farm here in Las Vegas. So I have an open house on Saturday and it's in Summerlin. Okay. So maybe I want to include people who have the tag Summerlin because that's one of the lists that I build is by geographic location based on Facebook ads and, um, you know, targeting that way. Uh, maybe I want to do that. Or let's just say I do. So let's just say I'm going to hit everybody in Summerlin, all of the people that are in my list that are in Summerlin. And then I'm going to include people that have the potential buyer tag. Now, remember, these are tags that I've already created by segmenting, segmenting my audience. You really want to make sure that when you're lead generating in any capacity that you are using tags to identify that audience with the purpose of targeting them later with messages and content that fits them. Segmenting is what really can make your list rise to a high level. That one earlier that you saw that I had like a 63% open rate or whatever, that was like the most laser targeted segmented audience with a very specific message that you could possibly imagine. Where if I'm just sending an email to 8,000 real estate agents, while they're all real estate agents, that doesn't necessarily mean that they would be interested in digital marketing strategies, right? So, so different kinds of things. So that might be something that, that we do as we say, open house in Summerlin, tag only buyers. Or maybe we do um, in Summerlin, and then we exclude people with the tag uh, past client or exclude people with the tag out of town, 
non-locals, whatever it is, because if they don't live here, it wouldn't make sense to invite them to an open house, would it? So those are just some examples of how that works. And most of my lists are formatted with a um, if this tag and not this tag. But you could do things like if birthday is within certain time frame, if home anniversary is in within certain time frame, because you can also use custom fields. And this to me is one of the best features of Keep compared to some of the um, uh, some of the more popular email autoresponder platforms like Mailchimp and Constant Contact and those types of things is that you can use any field in here to create a list. So I could use birthdays, I could use anniversaries, I can use a custom field if I wanted to. I could use send this list only to people that live in such and such city, country, state, time zone, you know, like any of those, people that don't have a phone number. Maybe I'm gonna do a, uh, email broadcast and I'm just using a plain text uh, email and I say, hey, I'm just updating my list this year and I notice that I don't have a valid phone number for you. Maybe something changed. Can you send me back your phone number? And maybe I'm going to work on a filling in phone numbers campaign, right? Here's the custom fields option, all kinds of things you can do with custom fields. All right, you get the idea, okay? All right, so first you're going to pick your recipients. Next, you're gonna add a subject line and you have merge fields over here. So you can say, I, let's just say this one, let's just say we're gonna do an open house invite, right? Um, here's a chance to choose your neighbor. I don't know, I heard that one, so I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> I don't know how they really choose their neighbor, but that was uh, one of the pitches. So we're gonna go down here and then we're gonna say contact fields, most common first name. So now their first name will be inserted. Then you have this preview text. And if you ever wonder what something is, if you hover over that little I or click on it, it'll say this appears in the recipient's inbox directly under the email subject line. You can add different text or will automatically include the first few words from your email message. So it's not required to put something in here but you have the option to do so, okay? Now we get into your page builder, okay? So each of these little areas here are sections, okay? And to the left, what you're gonna see is these widgets that you can drag in to create more of this content, okay? So let's just start at the top and then we'll go down. So the first one here, they have a logo. So to change this to your logo, you're just gonna click change image and then you can actually browse through your own photos or you can use a custom image URL or you can upload a picture. So a custom image URL, for example, is something like this, let's just say you don't have your own image, you know you have a logo, but for some reason it's not on the computer you're working on. So you go over to Google and you type in something like um, Lori Ballin logo. You type in your logo, you click on images on Google, and you look down here and you find your logo. I'm just gonna use this, uh, no, because that one's, oh, there we go, let's use this one. Okay, so there's my real estate logo, right? So what you do is if you click on this um, image, let's do it this way. Let's click on the share. There it is. There's an image URL, okay? So we're gonna click to copy the link. We're gonna go back over and let's see how this works. Custom image URL, paste in that URL. Oh, it didn't work. Hold on, what did I, I must have done something wrong. Okay, well in some cases that's gonna work, in some cases that's not gonna work. So instead, let us let me do this. Just because I don't know if I have this one saved. I'm gonna right click, save image as, nope, that's not gonna work either. All right, let's see if I can do it this way. Right click, save image as Lori Ballantine logo. 
Oh man, this is not gonna let me save that as a JPEG. Okay, well you're getting to see exactly how this looks in real life every day with the figuring things out as we go. How about that one? Okay, so let's just browse for a logo of any kind. I'm gonna go to browse and let me see if I have anything. This is a brand new computer, so I just know I don't have as much. Oh, all right, not my logo, but we're gonna go with that because these were from blogs that I'm working on. Okay, so that was an easy way to do it. So as long as you have the image on your computer or you have a correct image URL, then you can um, upload it there. Here you can place a link to the image. So if you have a background image here, I'm sorry, we're doing a logo. If you have your logo image and you want to link this, let's just say you want to link it to your real estate website. I'm just going to go to image link URL and I'm going to type in my real estate website. Okay. And by the way, before we get too far into this, I do want to let you know that my brothers, Jeff and Paul, actually build out Keep and Infusionsoft systems. So they, they can help you with building out custom email funnels, or they actually have a bunch built in for real estate. It's called Autopilot ISA, and it's based on my lead conversion strategies. And there's an email and text campaign. So whenever you get a home value lead or a buyer lead, or you put somebody into your open house list, or you put somebody into the birthday list, they have holidays, the campaigns all go for you. So if you're interested in, in, in getting something like this, talk to Jeff and Paul over at ballonbrands.com. They also build real estate agent websites powered by IDX and within the WordPress format. They run your Facebook ads, your Google ads, all of that. So if you need help with real estate marketing, talk to Jeff and Paul over at ballonbrands.com. Those are my brothers. And that's their company. Okay. Now, so let's take a look. We've done the URL. Now here, you can click this little tag button and what it does is it allows you to add a tag that will basically it adds a tag to the contact record if they click that image so in some cases people are doing super advanced things and if somebody clicks something then something else happens you know it's part of the funnel or maybe they just want to make a note that this person is opening the videos or that you know this many people clicked on the images so that's an option it certainly is not required and then you have your image description your alt text which is in case somebody opens this and cannot see the image and they're using a screen reader so you in this particular case um, well, let's, let's, this is our logo. So it would say Lori Ballin team, Las Vegas real estate logo. Oh, it doesn't let me put that all in Lori Ballin logo. <laughs> okay. You got the ability to sharpen an image and then you can align it left, middle and right. Once you get the flow of this, what I just did, your sections are all going to be pretty easy because this is basically how it all works. That left-hand side, you follow those little steps, you put everything in there. And again, once you set this up once, you can save it as a template. And then every month, all you if you're sending a newsletter every month, all you have to do is come in and say, change just the things that are relevant at that time, okay? All right, so now we have a section header. So we're thinking to ourselves, what do I, what kind of newsletter am I sending? I think we just said open house, right? We're sending an open house. Okay. So then this image here, I'm going to click on this image and we go to change image. Let me see if I have something like a house on here. I'm going to go to browse. I may have to snag an image. Okay. So for the sake of needing to have something, let's just go to Canva. And I'm going to grab the same size image that I use every time for my blogs and my YouTube videos. And I'm just going to grab a picture of a house. Ooh, let's try open house. Maybe that would be cool. No, 
because the words already say open house. So let me just take a kitchen. That's funny. This is the same kitchen, for those of you guys that follow me on KW Command Training, this is the same kitchen that's in all those postcards and ads that I always say I love that. I think it is. I always say I love that white, clean space. Okay, so that's so funny. Um, so let me just download this really quick. Okay, and we're gonna, I'm just gonna put open house and we're gonna put this on my desktop. And then we'll go back to keep. Okay, we're gonna go to browse. And I'm gonna go to desktop, open house, and let's plop that in there and see how it looks. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I see. Okay, now in that particular section, that was already an image that had a text overlay. Remember it said open house on it? So if I wanted to, I can still, I would probably have to go in and edit this image. I have not done a lot of editing um, like that in Keep, so I would have to play with that. But I do a lot in Canva, and then I bring my pictures over. So let's just go with that one. And then underneath that, let's just put Open House. And then here you would put whatever text would be appropriate. This amazing new horse property just came on the market in Centennial Hills, Las Vegas. Okay. Please join us for the open house. Then underneath that, I'm probably going to use bullet point something like this and i would just put sunday march 25th 2021 and then here 12 p.m to 4 p.m this is just an example okay um cookies and bottled water <laughs> right you just put refreshments whatever um, drawing for a gift basket with a $50 gas card. Okay. That's just, that was something I did all the time when I was actively working as an agent on my team. Today I stay behind the scenes and I work, I, I generate all the leads on the computer and build the websites and all of that. But back in the day when I used to work open houses, I would always have a sponsor um, donate a gift basket. And sometimes the gift basket was a uh, multiple sponsors and I put the basket together, but somebody would donate the $50 gas card that brought in so many people to the open house. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's that. And then down here, you've got additional sections. Now, you're not required to use that section. If you want to remove anything, all you have to do is click on it and delete. And as you can see, the little section to the right or to the left still stays, okay? If you don't want it there, you can click the trash can to get rid of it. And if you want to bring the image back, you just click here, drag it, and drop it. It's real simple. If you don't like the image up there, Drag it, drop it somewhere else and see what it does. You can play with it all you want. It's super easy once you're not afraid of it. Go ahead and break things. Make it not work so that you can figure out how to make it work, okay? Now, let's say we have a video of this open house. Or we have a video of a, don't over video, don't include a full virtual tour of the house where people then aren't gonna come to the open house but maybe include, you know, use one of the uh, cool video softwares that just does a, a quick little montage of the pictures with the text over it, like a uh, Instagram story or reel or TikTok video or whatever, They'll do a little short one, but don't show the whole house. Maybe you're talking, you're inviting them. Anyway, let's just say you wanna add the video. So just grab the little video widget, drag it over here, anywhere you want, Maybe we put it down here, drop it. Now, remember what I said to the left, that left column is where you 
edit everything, customize it. This is where you make it work, right? So up here, it's telling us it needs us to paste a URL from Wistia, YouTube, or Vimeo. So let's just say we're gonna go over to YouTube and I'm gonna put um, just listed. I'm just gonna grab any video for now so that we can grab one. Okay, there's a picture of a house, okay? So let's just take, uh, is that Amy? We're gonna go share, copy the URL, go back over to keep and paste that right in there. And there's your video. Now, this little slider makes your video bigger or smaller. I typically like it to be the full width of the page when I'm making mine. Now, if you're recording horizontally on your phone, you won't have those sidebars like that's what happened here, it looks like. So those sidebars are just because of how she recorded the video, not because of how Keep is showing the video. Um, that will be different. So. In fact, let me just uh, grab you one here. Let's go Adobe. Let's grab share, copy, keep, and then click the video, go back to the left, and then we'll, we'll paste it. Okay. Oh, interesting. So that one did get, that one still has got the bars on the top. So I'm not sure why, it's, why it does the little black bars. Um, but anyway, okay, so the, but the video works. It looks great. I'm going to show it to you in a preview in just a couple minutes, okay? Um, there's little spacers in between your sections. You can add those. You can remove them if you want things to be a little closer together. This is super easy to navigate. Again, once you get a quick feel for how the drag and drop builder works, it's going to be so much easier, okay? You've got buttons. And again, just go up to the left, make your changes section title it okay so you did um our logo open house now we've got a video of the open house now you know, we might do something like um uh let's do let's do a quick blurb maybe about the neighborhood stats or the las vegas real estate market like what would interest your buyers okay and now down here just in case you are curious, here are some quick stats on the current market. If you, okay, we, we're, we're assuming this is already buyers that are in our database. So we don't need to say call us for real estate needs because they're already in our database, right? So just in case you're curious, here are some quick stats on the current market. Now you're gonna put in your bullet points and I'm gonna put something like average uh, single family residence average price is 352. And then you might do something like days on market. Um, it's a seller's market with limited inventory. This means buyers must act quickly and position themselves in the best way when making an offer. We can help with that, whatever, okay? Okay, now this little yellow thing pops up and it tells us when, when email has content that looks like spam. So we're gonna click the show spam check. And what it says over here is, your email has huge sums of money. So it doesn't like that we're putting in that average price range right there. It's just telling us that there's a chance we're gonna land in more spam for people that have filters that really filter out um, numbers like that. So we could um, take do this instead, take out the dollar sign. 352,000. Oh, trying to be clever. And I think that I, oh, let's refresh. Let's see if that, oh, it worked. Okay. So that's just a, 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 an example. That looks a little silly. I might play around with that a little bit. And sometimes I would disregard that and see how it still delivers. But I do like that it has that because so much of email these days lands in spam that we need to be 
we need help being told what looks like spam and what doesn't because we don't know if you're not trying to spam and be crazy we don't necessarily know okay so you could play around with that or you could put a link to your real estate market if you want down here maybe you want maybe you have a um get directions for the open house it depends remember who you're sending the newsletter to the content should match your audience that's why segmenting down to a very specific type of audience will help you know what messaging to create i'm not going to put click here to look at all properties if they're a buyer that's already in my mls search and getting drip email you see that wouldn't make any sense so what what else what do i want to how what, what else do i want to offer them you know maybe you have an open house rsvp download the brochure you know get directions and maybe that takes them to the google map or to a landing page about the listing or to whatever it is a pop-up form that but you don't need them to register again they're already in your database right so all we're trying to i'm just giving you an example of how the button works i may not even have a button in this particular case one thing that i have learned recently doing mass email is that spam filters are going to put more of your emails in spam when there's not two-way communication. So if you're on my data, on my mailing list, you're getting emails from me, you'll notice that I'm starting to do something at the bottom of my emails. And I'm often putting something like, any questions for me or something like that. And it's generating a lot more responses. So ending your email with a question designed to get that person to communicate back will help you with those spam filters as well. It's all about creating engagement. You know, if they, if they think you're just broadcasting to all these people who never respond back, they're going to think that it's not valuable to them. So that's something that I've started working on. Okay. Now, if you go down here to the next section, there's a spacer. If you want to add some more anything, you just go back to blocks. So you can add a group. This group is really cool. Let me add that down to the very bottom. Okay. You can add a group. And then here you can add text to the uh, footer. You can, oh, that's, I'm sorry. I'm editing the unsubscribe link. I thought I dragged a group down there. There it is. Okay. So now I've got a group that just basically includes an image and a text in one box. It's just basically another section. If I wanted something that looked like um, multiple images together, like maybe I also want to put in here similar properties. Okay, so this is something I often do. So we grab the text box. We drag that down to start a new section. And I'm going to put um, related properties. Now using this editor bar up here, I can change the text to be a heading if I want it to be. I can change the alignment if I want to change that. Okay, so you can play with that. You can add links just like you would with your WYSIWYG editors. The what you see is what you get editors. Most of you are used to seeing those if you've done any type of blogging or um, content creations that, that have that in there. Now I want to drag an image. So we're going to drag an image down right there. And then let me see if I can drag an image next to that one. I want it. There we go. Right to the side. And then we want to go do one more. Let's do, see if I can fit. Can I fit three? I can. So what happens is each little block you add, it just makes it a little bit smaller. Now let's say I have three listings for sale right here. I can click add an image and I can just plop in the next listing right here. Drag that image, make it big, put in a link to that listing, or you can put in a file download, a phone number, a landing page, a web form. You can get fancy if you want. Okay. Then you go in and do the next one. Remember, it's all about that slider to get them how you want them. And then you go in and grab the next one. So anything related could look like that. Okay. If you decide, oh, I don't like them all scrunched up like that. You just drag it. Let me move that down. So see when they're by themselves, they get big. So maybe you want to have one big and then two on the bottom that are small. 
So you can play with that all you want. It's fantastic. So clean, easy. And then another cool block here is this um, social media block. You can drag this in. I like it up top, right underneath the logo. Now you're going to add in your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, and your YouTube by simply putting them right here. So I would go over to Facebook. I would find the Lori Ballin team, Las Vegas, my real estate team. There it is. Right up top here, you've got a URL. Copy that. Paste it. See that? Then you go to Twitter and do the same thing. And then if you click Add More, you've got LinkedIn, YouTube, Google+, Pinterest, and Instagram. They need to expand that a little bit because there's so many more that people are using. Sometimes you might want to include the email button. Now, obviously with TikTok being so popular, so there's more, a lot more social channels that a lot of us are using. But these are pretty common for the for real estate agents, I would say, for the most part. Okay, so you can do that and add those there. And then we saw the button at the bottom. And then the only, this code, if you put the code in here, you can add any HTML code that you want right here. So anything that could be embedded. Oh my gosh. I have to try this. Let's just try something really quick. I'm going to go to IDX broker. I'm going to go to login. So this is the IDX that uh, Ballon Brands uses for their websites. If you need a website, and this is also what I use. And I'll put a link below to that. I'm going to go to widgets and I'm going to go to new. Now I am an affiliate with most of the software that I use. So I'll probably earn a commission if you wind up making a purchase within a certain time frame. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I want to make sure that you to disclose that. Okay. We're going to go to create new. Oh, I need to go to legacy. Sorry about that. Let me just grab any of my widgets. Let me, let me just grab a, a three column, a three pack widget. So these are widgets that I created for my website that show real estate listings. I know what to do. I'm going to go with the most recent ones I've created. Golf frontage carousel. Ooh, that might be good. Let's try that. So I'm going to click preview so you can see what it looks like. So this is where it takes them. Oh, there it is. This is the widget. This is what a widget looks like. This is a carousel widget like a slider of homes. I'm going to copy that. I just got to see if this works now. I, I have not tried this yet on here and I'm going to paste it. Oh, does it not work? Oh, I thought I was going to get lucky. Okay. I'm going to have to ask Jeff about that because there might be a workaround um, to try to get that to work. So basically you, you can use a uh, minimal, HTML. How about a banner? I'm going to try one other thing here. So being an affiliate marketer, I often use banners on things on my website, on my newsletters, and I earn a commission if that, if somebody makes a purchase. Okay. So let me just grab any banner. We'll go to similar web. So here we go. All right. I'm just gonna grab this one code. I I'm not sure what code will work on here. What won't. So I was testing a couple things. Ah, that works. That's really cool. Now I can't make it bigger without playing with the code, but at least I know I can drop that in. So if I choose the right size banner, that would look really good up there. So for example, let me just give you a real life example. So let's say you're sending, you're doing an open house email and you're working with a mortgage company. Okay. Whatever your relationship is with that mortgage company. Maybe you want to put a mortgage company banner right up top here. You know, um, maybe you've got a home staging company or home inspector, or you've you have a team of um, ancillary partners and you all have agreed to promote each other. Maybe there's monetary exchanges for advertising where it's permitted, whatever. That's just an example of how you might use that. Okay. Um, I'm an affiliate marketer for Hulu and cable companies and things like that. So maybe I put 
a, a cable, you know, get your cable or whatever. But these people haven't bought a house yet, so that wouldn't be a super smart strategy for this exact example. How about a moving company, moving boxes, Amazon links, whatever. Um, Amazon links you have to be careful about because they have regulations about sending through private emails. But a lot of these other ones don't. So anyway, I digress. I always get back onto my affiliate marketing, which is my love. Okay, so then down here, one more thing we do, we take the signature, we drag the signature in and we drop it at the bottom and now it'll populate all of your info for you. If you don't want your info, you can click the little drop down box and you can change it to any, somebody else on your team if that's what you wanna do, okay? Now that we have finished it all, what we do next is we go to preview. Now we can preview. We preview in desktop form, we preview in um, email form, and you just scroll down and you can see how everything came together. That looks excellent. How did everything come together? Excellent. Now, if you have multiple companies like me, you could have uh, signatures for your different companies. So you could have Lori Ballin, the real estate agent. I can have Lori Ballin, the coach. I can have Lori Ballin, the keto um, coach or the, you know, the trainer, whatever I want to put on those, I can edit those. Okay. So you can take a look at how those come out here. And then the other thing you can do right here is you click test, put in your email and it will send you an email test to your inbox where you can check it and make sure it all works before you send it. Then when you actually go to send, you're going to click review and send. Okay. Oh, I, I got to put somebody in here. So let me just put Lori in here. Oh, let me just pick a tag then. Okay. So then what you do is you go to review and send. And if everything is perfect, you can just click schedule and you're done. Okay. You can also choose to send at the best time today. And if you send at the best time today, it will choose based on that when the user opens their emails, which is the best time to send it to them. But do keep in mind that might mean that they're not going to get that email until the wee hours, right? So if you're expecting instant results and you send this out and you schedule it to send it the best time today, you're not going to see results right away. Okay. You can send now or you can schedule for a later time and date. You've got the calendar, you've got the times, and you've got the um, time zone. So that's it, that's all there is to it. Pick a template, play around, break things, get it done. And I'm Lori Ballin, thank you so much for joining me today. If you need help with your marketing, call my brothers, Jeff and, Hul Jeff and Paul Helvin at ballinbrands.com.